hey guys welcome back to my channel so in this video i will talk to you guys about my experience being based in denver versus my experience being based in dallas um just the differences between the two what i like what i don't like if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe go ahead and like this video because it's going to be great and without further ado let's get started so first things first about denver uh I guess when I make my list, I'll just always start with Denver and then switch over to Dallas, if that makes sense. First thing is the weather. The weather was super nice in Denver. Um, I really don't have no complaints. Like the weather was good. It wasn't humid, none of that. It was always like a smooth 60, 70 degrees. And I like cold weather, so maybe I'm more biased, but I did like Denver's weather overall it only rained probably two times from me being there being based there from what was it being based there from march to june so yeah only about two times now being in dallas it is hot it is so hot like walking from my apartment my once I step outside, just to get from the garage to the car, I'm sweating. And I don't even sweat like that. It takes a lot for me to start sweating. Like, I, my uniform is sticking to my back a little bit. It's disgusting. It is so hot in Dallas. It makes no sense. I mean, people always told me that it gets really hot in Dallas, but no. It's scorching hot. Um, when sometimes when I get to the airplane, the water is like super warm and it looks cloudy because the minerals, the added minerals in the water have been sitting in that heat, bubbling in that heat so long that the water looks like gray and cloudy and I do not recommend drinking that or serving that because I don't even think that's healthy, but do what you will with that information. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you what drinking cloudy water causes. So, but I don't recommend, I just don't recommend it. But anyways, it's scorching hot in Dallas. It's never been that hot in Denver. So I will give Denver the weather. Second thing that I want to point out is delays. Now, Denver was, being in an airport altogether is a timely situation like there's there isn't room for me being late i always have to be on time right staff um and airline employees airline workers we all have to be there on time in denver i feel like i maybe had maybe three four maybe even five delays but when it comes to dallas we have delays almost every single flight. Like I can count on one hand how many flights were actually on time. It's between the weather, between ground stops, between mechanical issues. It's so many things that happen that almost every trip is delayed. And when I say delayed, I don't even mean 10 minutes. I'm talking, we're starting 45 minutes minimum. It's been two hours before. The latest it's been has been five hours that we were delayed. Um, yeah, it's it's ridiculous. The delays are absolutely ridiculous in Dallas. It's crazy. Like I like to the point where I wouldn't even recommend planning to do something when you get off. No, because there's there's gonna be a delay and you won't have time to get to wherever you're going. So. If you make plans and you put in a two to three hour delay, then maybe you'll make whatever plans you have to do after work. But no, I would not. Uh -uh. The delays are so common in Dallas, it's ridiculous. The delays are so common in Dallas that before I leave my house, I check to see if the flight is delayed before I leave. And every time it's delayed, every single time every single time it's delayed so that's how common it is three is going to be about seniority so my seniority went up 
so much when I was in Denver because um, every class that I graduated from um, the company that I work at, they would send new people to Denver. So it was like every week, every single week, my number was going up. I was going up in seniority, which was cool. Um, but yeah, my number was going up every single week. Honestly, not even every week, low key every two or three days because I don't know if it was whether people were leaving the company or people were not able to make their shifts or they were quitting. I don't know. I don't know what was going on, but my number was going up almost every two to three days in Denver. Also with, um, with seniority in mind, I would be working with new people all the time, like people who just graduated and they would be like, oh my God, like, can you give me any tips? And I'm like, girl, I just graduated too. Like it's the blind leading the blind at this point. I don't have any advice for you. I just started just like you did. Like I didn't, it would be so weird. I feel like if you graduated this year, then you're new. So it's like a new person working with a new person. It's definitely the blind leading the blind at this point. And we're by ourselves on this plane. So it's just like, okay, we just have the manual with us in the universe. And we're just gonna have to make this do what it do. Um, of course, nothing bad ever happened. But a month of trips, I would probably have one trip out of the month where I was working with someone who was actually senior to me versus in Dallas it's the opposite I'm always working with someone senior people who have been in the game for seven years three years eight years 11 years and there's me first year so I mean that's always good because you can learn from other people they can give you tips and whatnot um the, everyone's still been pretty like fairly nice I haven't really had any issues at all um but I will say being in Dallas it's one out of a month I feel like I see one junior person I have a trip with one junior person out of the month and everyone else is senior to me so that's a difference that I notice in seniority between Denver and Dallas number four would be Working the PM shift in Denver, I knew for a solid fact that by 5.30, if crew support did not call me, I was good for the day. Whether I put in, you know, call, not call first, but um, what's the other option? Early release. Whether I put in early release or not, I would be done. If they didn't call me by 5.30, I'm free to go pretty much because there were no more flights after I think seven in Denver versus in Dallas. No, that is not the case. I've been called as late as 830 and my shift, my reserve shift ends at nine. I've been called at 830. Um, there have been flights that leave at 10 o'clock and then they'll get delayed until 11.30. So trust me, in Dallas, nine to nine, you better be available. Like, that's all I can say because anything can happen, literally anything. There are so many flights that take off at night in Dallas, it's ridiculous. So yeah, that is the, that's what sucks about being nine to nine in Dallas, but it's the truth. Another thing I wanted to point out with um, that reserve PM shift is that when I was in Denver, the last trip would always end for me around 4.30, 5.30-ish. Yeah, 4.30, 5.30-ish, because I will always be able to make my flight to commute back to Atlanta when I did live in Atlanta. So, that was all that always worked out. I would never have to worry about like having a flight that was super late in Denver because they didn't fly late in Denver. However, working nine to nine in Dallas, 
I don't get released until sometimes, first of all, the earliest would be 7.30 p.m. And it has been as late as 12.30 a.m. It's been crazy. Like, I will get released at late times you like I've I have not had a day where I was released at four no another thing about Dallas is that the last day the last like day like say you have a four day trip the last day is always three legs like I cannot get away with a one and done in Denver I used to have a one and done it would be so nice no not in Dallas every single trip has been three legs. I think I've even had four legs one time on the last day. It's just like, I I am not a fan of like working a long day on the last day. It's just so draining. I wish it was one and done. So I do miss those one and done days that I used to have in Denver. And of course, the one and done days in Denver were barely even one and done days because it would be one and then sit on call for like four hours. So, but I think that's better than having three legs that are two and a half hours long each. That's a long day. Oh, and a three hour sit in between one of them. That calls for a long day. Number five is gonna have to be that Denver has absolutely horrible food options. Um, I've probably tried almost every restaurant inside of Denver and not a fan of anything really i mean chick-fil-a like that's standard um yeah they just don't have good food options mcdonald's doesn't even have a, a ice cream machine ben and jerry's closes at like five o'clock who wants ice cream before five They would make so much more money if they were open until like, you know, at least eight o'clock, nine o'clock. I, I really don't understand why they're closed at five. There's like 10 Starbucks locations inside of the Denver airport, but only three of them are open. And they also have weird hours and they close at like three o'clock. So yeah, it's just, it's not favorable versus Dallas. Now, Dallas has options galore. First of all, they have a wing stop. Wing stop. Papa Do's, Papa Cito's, Maggiano's, TGI Fridays, California Pizza Kitchen. They have so many options. Dallas, Fort Worth, their food options are honestly undefeated. Like, I've never seen, I've never seen a wing stop inside of an airport. So yeah, they're, they're definitely top tier when it comes to food options. You don't wanna spend all your money on food, but if you're gonna treat yourself, I'd rather you treat yourself in Dallas-Fort Worth Airport than Denver because Denver's food options are trash. Another thing that I want to mention is that um, Denver has one TSA line, I believe. Yeah, they have one TSA line. So let's say you need to go to Seagates, right? You have to go to the TSA line, which is a long line, especially for regular people, like people who are who don't go through KCM. So you go through TSA, you go down the escalators, and then you have you have no choice but to take a train that is everyone is taking the same train every single person that goes through tsa has to take this train to go to b or c gates you can walk to a gates however you can't to b or c gates so all those people are going all on that train it is it's only one train and it comes like every like four or five minutes it is just Oh, it's so crowded. It is definitely not a COVID friendly means of transportation at all. It's especially not favorable when you're 
gate number B90 and then you have to go through TSA, get on the train and then walk like a mile just to get to your gate. That's that's super far. You have you would have to add on at least 15 minutes to your arrival time prior just to make sure you get there on time if that makes sense versus in Dallas there is a TSA at each gate so if you have to go to for instance C gates you would go to C arrivals go through that TSA and then boom you're there now that's so much more better and I feel like every airport if it's a big airport should have a TSA at each gate that's just it's so much better I don't think it should be like mandatory that you have to take the train because I'm like what if the train breaks there's no way for me to get to sea gates in Denver like at all so that's something for the you know airlines to think about but that's one thing that I don't did not care for when I was in Denver. One thing that I observed in being in both um, domiciles or both bases is that no matter whether I was on AM shift or PM shift, sometimes crew support will, like, for example, if I work nine to nine, crew support will put a um, trip on my schedule, like, for 7 a.m. and it's like that's not in the nine to nine but okay and then there's been other times where they will put me sorry I'm about to cook some food so oh maybe I can make a um what's in my lunch bag because I'm making chickpeas but anyways back to the story Your support will put um ahead of time it's always ahead of time so i'll give them that but they will put me on on call from 6 a.m to 2 p.m when i work nine to nine so i'm like what is that all about why why am i being called outside of my ship but honestly that's happened in denver and it's happened in dallas so i'm assuming that's just the way it is um and i can't fight that so, so those were all of my you know differences between Dallas and Denver of course if I had to choose I'm choosing Dallas because I don't have to commute um it's so nice not to commute you guys like commuting just it just took uh it takes so much energy out of you to commute especially three hours and a time difference and it costs to commute to work like as far as like finding somewhere to stay so yeah if I now if I didn't have to commute if I actually lived in Denver hmm, uh, I don't know that's a tough one because the food options suck but the weather is nice there's no delays. Hmm. But that TSA line and that one train, yeah. I think I'm gonna stick to Dallas. I will still stick to Dallas because I really don't like. I don't know, I just wasn't a fan. I just wasn't really a fan of being in Denver. Um when I can compare it to Dallas. So maybe if there was another domicile that I was at that I could see you know the difference maybe but you know still close but Dallas is definitely better but that's just my opinion let me know in the comments um where you're based at do you like it do you want to transfer somewhere else definitely consider these factors um if you're looking to transfer um that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you want to see in the comments down below and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.